All right, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Familiar passage of scripture. It says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, unto the uttermost parts of of the earth. And this morning I want to speak to you a few minutes about how important is missions to our church. How important is missions to our church. Let us pray. Father, we come to you this morning and we thank you for the word of God. Father, we thank you for each one that's here this morning. Father, we thank you for the message that you have this morning, Lord. We ask you'll bless it. You'll give us power and unction from the Holy Spirit to preach it. Lord, you might take your message and apply it in hearts and lives here today. And, Father, that you'd have your will and way in the invitation. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Of course, this is the starting of Missions Month, and we emphasize missions all month. And sometimes I think people kind of wonder, why do we put so much emphasis on missions? And why do we take the time to have mission programs and have missionaries in and have them present their fields and, and support them monthly so they can do what they do? Well, first and foremost, that's the job God gave us to do. And here you get one piece of it, of the Great Commission, where he said that he would give us the power to do that. And we were to be witnesses into Jerusalem, which would be like Fort Worth or Halton City. And into Judea would be like Texas. And Samaria would be like America. And then if that wasn't far enough, he said, into the uttermost parts of the world. Now, I'm not a rocket scientist, but it didn't take me long to figure out I can't do all of that. Just not possible for me to be everywhere at once, and neither is it for you. So God has given us a way to do that. He gives us two options to do missions as a Christian and a child of God. You either can go or you can give, one of the two. Personally, I like the giving part. I see some of the places that some of these guys are willing to go. Uh, I'm glad God didn't call me to go. I don't say that too loud because you never know he might do it. Uh, but I'm glad I can give. But the reason it's important to us as a church, and there's some reasons for it, of course, missions should be the primary job of the church. It's the only job that God has gave the church to do. I mean, we have a lot of outreaches and ministries that we do. But the basic, specific job that God has given this church and every other Bible-believing church to do is to win souls, number one. And when we get our focus and our eyes off of the number one objective and begin to focus on the other things, uh, we'll no longer be what God intended for us to be as a church. And I believe that's one of the reasons that Beacon has lasted for 70 years as we've kept our eyes on the goal and the main goal God's given us, and that's to win souls to the Lord first and foremost. Uh, we have to understand that there's two kinds of people in the world, and I know what you're going to say because we say it all the time, yeah, lost sinners and saved sinners. Well, that's true. But you're either a missionary or a mission field, one of the two. Uh, if you're saved, you're the missionary. God's the one that said, go to all the world and reach them for the gospel and, and teach them what they should do. So we're missionaries, and those who are lost are the mission field. And we have that job. We serve a missionary God. Uh, the Bible in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and save that which was lost. Who was the first missionary? What is a missionary? A missionary is one who comes from the authority of God, leaves his home, and goes to a far land to reach others for Christ. That's basically what we consider a missionary. The first missionary was Jesus Christ. He left his home in heaven, came to this old earth and took flesh, and sought after man and seeking him that he might save him and provide salvation. He was the first missionary God there was. Go back further than that. God himself in the Garden of Eden came seeking Adam in the garden. So he's always been a missionary to man. Now, that still doesn't tell us why it's so important that a church be involved in a missions program. 
Missions is the prime factor in the success and growth of a church. Now, we're not going to turn there for sake of time and read all the scriptures, but here in that book of Acts, just a couple of chapters from here, you'll find that the church of Jerusalem began to grow and was richly blessed. Uh, we know at one time, on one day, there was 5,000 added to that church. And the next time you find it mentioned in the scripture, there was 3,000 souls added. So whatever they were running when Pentecost come, after Pentecost, they had 8,000 members added to that. So this was not some little puny church in your house. This was a large, vibrant, growing church. But we find something interesting. A few more chapters after this, where do you find this church? Acts chapter 11, verses 27 through 30 tells us. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And they stood up one of them named Abagus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great dearth throughout all the world, which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Jerusalem. And Judea, I'm sorry. Which also they did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So now here's this church in Jerusalem and Judea. At one point we see them growing vibrantly. 8,000 members. Man, how do you accommodate for 8,000 members in two, two weeks? Three weeks. Man, that's some church growth. That's a church explosion. We'd be stacking them on the roof or somewhere. I don't know where we'd put them. But we find now, here's this same church. And there's other passages I could turn to this morning to show you that the church in Jerusalem now is in poverty and in ruin. Which brings the big question, why? What happened? I'm going to tell you what happened. And why? The answer of why they wound up where they were is because they were not fulfilling all of what God told them to do. You see, God told them they needed to go out and reach the world. If you basically get to what God called the Jews for, God called the Jewish nation to be a nation of priests to spread the gospel throughout the world. That's the basic thing God started with the Jews for. So now he gives the church this great commission. To go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature and to every nation and every tongue and every person on the earth. Great, great big job. But now we find this growing church is now in poverty. The reason is they were in partial disobedience. What the church said, said, we're, we love God and we're the church and we're going to do what God says, but we're sticking it right here. We're not going anywhere. We're staying right here in Jerusalem. We're not going out and reaching the world. We're going to stay. We're doing okay right here. I mean, we're running 8,000 members and we're doing fine and they probably had a big building. They had probably plenty of money and they thought things were going great. But all of a sudden things turned around. And I believe with all my heart, and I'll say this until you give me scripture different or God tells me different. The success of any church depends on their mind for missions. Missions is our number one thing and our number one goal. And I believe the reason the church at Jerusalem wound up where they were is because they would not do the call of missions that God gave them to do. You say, why has Beacon Baptist been successful? Why does Beacon Baptist have the financial success it does? I'm going to tell you why. It's because it's had the heart for missions it does. You cannot, God will not bless a church that does not have a heart for missions. And I can name churches that I've been in and know of that are little bitty churches and not much to do in their missions program is they put a little church up in the front and if you want to come put a few pennies in it, that's their missions program. I guarantee you, you can't do much for missions with a few pennies. What we give for missions is not much compared to some other churches that give a lot more for missions because they're bigger. But I guarantee you, our support per missionary is probably as much or more than most of the big churches. And I believe God has blessed us because of that. 
Look at the size of our church. A lot of our folks on fixed incomes, Social Security, but yet we support 30 missionaries, $90 a month. That's why we have the success financially we have. That's why we have what God has given us and we have the stability in our finances because God blesses when we do what he says. We're reaching Jerusalem, Haltom City. We're doing our best as a church to reach Haltom City. That's our first and primary target is this town. That's where we have our most effect is right here around us and where you live and where I live. Uh, we're to be winning those around us. If you're here this morning, that's why you're here. God has brought you here that we might give you the word of God and let you know that you're lost and on your way to a devil's hell. But Jesus died for your sin. If you'll come this morning, uh, we can take you off the highway to hell and put you on the highway to heaven by the word of God. Make you a child of God instead of a child of the devil. And that's not nice, and people might not like that, but that's just facts the way it is. That's a cold, hard facts. I don't know about you, but I don't like a doctor when he comes in and says, Now, this shot's going to hurt a little bit. I'll never forget the first time I had one of those injections in my heel for plantar fasciitis. He said, Now, this is going to hurt a little bit. Man, I come out about that far out of that chair, and I want to punch him in the eyes. I don't, you know, why don't you just tell me it's going to hurt like the dickens so I've been ready for it? I want to know the facts like it is. And that's the, way, that's the good thing about an independent fundamental Baptist church. If nothing else, you're going to get the facts. Whether you like it or not and whether it's nice or not. That's the fact. That's the word of God. That's what he says. This morning Jesus died for you. And we're here this morning with the word of God and the plan of God. A salvation that you can become a child of God this morning if you'll come. That's our job. That's our primary that's the reason we do all the outreach programs we're doing and all the new programs we're trying to get started is to reach this area. Of course, we have statewide missions. We, do, we support missionaries in our state and around the world and in America because God told us to reach that too. But the ones that are really the tough guys is the foreign missionaries. I mean, when they go and they eat these ants and locusts and termites and all the stuff you see with no electricity and no health care and living in places that we wouldn't live with no running clean water and the things they go through they are really are putting their life on the line and we need to do that they were willing Jerusalem was willing to reach Jerusalem but they weren't willing to reach the other parts of the earth that was the problem and that's the reason we have missions this morning. God said we are to reach our, our area. And a lot of churches say, well, as long as we're doing what we're supposed to do here. I even had a, heard a professor in the seminary say that one time. He said, all this stuff about worldwide missions is a bunch of bunk. Church needs to take care of its local area and God will take care of the rest of the world. Well, needless to say, I didn't go there very much longer. That's unscriptural. That's not scriptural. Jesus just told me. Yes, I'm responsible for Halton City. Yes, I'm responsible for Texas. And yes, I'm responsible for America. But guess what? I'm responsible for the rest of the world too. So I do have that obligation. For this reason, we need to understand. And they didn't understand. They thought, well, we'll just stay here. You don't mess with God's plan. God brought persecution. They said, we're going to stay right here. We're not doing that, God. God said, you want to bet? We find in the scripture we read where because of persecution and famine, they had to go. I've always said this about God and his stuff. You can either give it, either the, I can't talk this morning either. You can either give it to him willingly or he can take it. One of the two. You'll either do God's job or he'll give it to somebody else to do. We can either have the blessings of God on us as a church or he'll give it to somebody else. And it's our responsibility and our goal to reach the world. We don't want God's taking our blessing and giving it to somebody else. That's why we emphasize missions so much. In conclusion this morning, why is mission so important to our church? A church will only be blessed of God when they get their eyes off themselves and on the lost world. That's when a church will be blessed.
We can't get ourselves focused on us. We got to get ourselves focused on the lost world. And thank God I believe, Beak, I'm not scolding you this morning. I'm just giving you some facts. I believe that's the reason we are where we are, is because we do have that focus. What I'm saying is we have to keep focused. God will not bless a church that is not complete in complete obedience. All through my Bible, I find that God says partial obedience is the same as disobedience. That's kind of like when I was a kid when my dad told me to mow the yard. If I mowed half the yard, I still got whooped. But dad, I mowed half of it. He said, yeah, but you didn't mow all of it. Told you to mow the yard. Same thing with God. We want to pick and choose what we do for God when God says, I didn't ask you what you want to do. I told you what to do in the first place. So we need to be in complete obedience. How big will our church be? I don't know. God's the giver of increase. But I guarantee you, our church will only be as big as your vision for lost souls. Our church will only be as big as your vision and my vision for lost souls. We need to get our eyes on the lost world because we don't have long to work, folks. I believe our time is short. Missions commitment, what is that? Missions commitment is greater every year. We need to enlarge our tent stakes, the Bible says. We need to increase it. And then you watch and see if I don't if it's not true. I've watched it for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. Any time the mission offering goes up, the general fund always goes up. Always. We need to keep giving to the Lord. Now I understand times are tight. And I understand things are tough. But you never outgive God. You're just not going to do it. He's not going to let you. He's not going to give you the pleasure of standing before him one day and saying, God, I gave this and you didn't give anything back. Not going to do it. This morning, as we start Missions Month, missions is very important to our church. I believe if Beacon's going to continue to be what it's been and blessed of God like it's been, we have to keep our missions goal like it's been to win the world. I believe if Beacon's going to continue to be what it's going to be, we have to get our vision on lost souls and off self. I believe if Beacon's going to continue to be blessed, we have to continue to do what God told us to do. Let's bow our heads in prayer.